All right, so I've got my Hamilton Beach water cooler, which I've had for probably 13 years. And uh, basically, it's been reliable enough for me, but the uh, heat went out probably within a year of having it, which I didn't care about heat. I only took, cared about the cool. As you see the lights on saying that it's attempting to cool, if you were to listen to it very closely, you could hear the motor running. Um, my switches work. So what I'm going to be doing is, um, considering how the new coolers always seem to have issues with uh, leaking or just breaking after a couple of months, according to the reviews and stuff like that, um, if I can get this cooler to work and just start cooling again, I'd be happy with it. Um, my investment in this is going to be $20. What I'm going to be doing is changing a relay, a couple of pieces in the back, because the water is slightly cooler than out of the tap but last week all of a sudden it's a little bit more tap water temperature wise so um if i had a thermostat i wish i had one i tried it with the thermometer but it didn't work to uh see what that temperature is coming out of there it's just barely a smidget of coolness so when working on this what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trading out a couple of parts i got this off of ebay cost me about $20 with shipping included so we're going to be changing out the relay and this other piece I, I think they're both sort of relays um, very common on a lot of your water cooler units and some uh, refrigerator air compressor units and um, that's what we're going to be changing out today so as we get started number one let's turn it off all right number two we're going to unplug it for safety all right we're ready to get to work here. So, on the back end of most cooler units, you're going to have like this little fin grill. Mine has a screw here and another one on the bottom, and then the same on the other side to take that off. So, I'm going to do that first, but I don't need to actually take off all four screws. Actually, all I need to do is just... Um, take off the two on the side. So I'm going to start off with that. So it's just a Phillips screwdriver. Simple enough. I'm going to push it in for a little back pressure so I can back it out. And the reason why I'm not going to take it off completely is just because I can reach where I'm going to be working fairly easy. The second screw is down here at the bottom. And since I can be careful with it, I'm not going to worry about breaking anything as well. So I've got just this little bit of play in here. And what I'm going to be working on is this piece right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it back just enough so I can get to my pieces that I need to work on, okay? So we want to be careful about your tube connectors, okay? That you don't bend or damage those. So inside of here, you're going to have usually a little box that you're going to be working it. It's going to have a little spring lock on it, as I like to call it, for lack of what it's really called. Easiest way to get this off is you're just going to push it in, and you can see already on the edge how it comes loose. So you're just pushing this down and then releasing it from the edge here. So we're going to be doing that on both sides to release it. Going to push it in with one finger and release it off the edge with the other. If you can't get in there with your fingers, you can probably push it in with your fingers and then uh, unclip the edge with the screwdriver. So it's easy enough to do. And then this box just slides off once you get the other end pushed and also detached. Okay, so the box comes out like that and all it is is these little hook pieces. So we got one right here, whereas if you were to push it in, it locked down on the other side. So you see the little hook helps to lock it in place. And you pretty much got the same thing on the other side as well with my particular model. Alright, now inside you've got these two little units which is what we're going to be replacing with the ones that I bought off of eBay. So these are real simple, you got all your wires and everything. From the looks of it my wires are good so I'm actually going to unplug it from my wiring as I replace it. I'm not going to replace it with my pieces and the wiring that came with it. That's cool that the wiring came with it, but it turned out it's unnecessary. 
So we're going to start out. You have an upper unit and a lower unit usually. So that simply pulls out. That's all it is. Just pulls out. This one is very warm since I had just now unplugged it. And what you want to do when you're looking up for replacement units of yours online is uh, look up your numbers that are on it. Such as in this case, you could see that. Let's see if I can get you a good focus here. You can see that mine is like a QP2 4R7. So I was able to look that up and um, found it at a whole bunch of Chinese distribution places, which I weren't interested in. But I uh, found it on eBay, which definitely was perfect because I got it in a couple of days instead of waiting weeks for it. And also I know it was an OEM product. So I've got my first one off. That leaves my second one in place. More other piece of it, I should say, in place. Get a better look at it right there. There we go. That one also just slides straight out. So you'll put it together in the reverse. You'll put this one in first and then the other. Okay? So my replacement unit again is like this one. And you can see on the bottom, it's got these little pins in it. So it's got this one little pinhole, which will go on your top here in my situation. And on the back of the black unit, I've got these two little black holes, pinholes which will plug in like this ultimately. What we're going to do here, so we have the lower one, it's got this brown wire on it, yeah. So that just unplugs out, so we're going to unplug it. Simple as that, just kind of pulls out. We're going to replace it with our newer unit. Okay. I'm going to slide it into position, which it just kind of goes on like that. And then I'm going to put the plug in place, which goes on like that. Simple enough. Then I've got my other little relay or ballast or whatever it's called that I'm going to be replacing. That one. And that just also unplugs by sliding it off. So that's my old one. This is my replacement unit that I got for it. What you want to do also when you get your replacement ones, make sure they're the same, okay? So make sure your plugs are in the same place, the same number of plugs that come out of it that you're going to be using, and the setup's the same, okay? So in this one, it works perfectly, and it's almost my same number. This is a uh, one that I had. Let's get my focus in here, which was a QP2 4R7. I ended up getting a QP2 4.7. So hopefully this is uh, pretty much the same thing from one unit to the other unit. So this is the new one, the replacement unit. I'm going to go ahead. It just slides on. You just line up your pins and it just goes on, okay? And then you just push it on nice and firm into place. That's where it goes. Everything is firm. And then I'm going to put my wire back on and into position. Now put my wires down so that they flow in the direction they're supposed to and put my cover back on. Cover is easy. You can see on the cover it's got a little slot here that's for your wires to kind of trail through. So you just put it back on the opposite way you took it off which in my case is just straightforward like that. Just kind of sits in place and the thing that holds it in place is the little spring. So you put that in there. Now I'm just going to slide it on and then slide it over. You just heard one side click and now this side you're going to see the action of it. Just push it in and that's it. Everything's in place. Wires are routed properly. Now I can go ahead and close this back up. Put your screws on. And place. Simple enough. And the same thing with the lower one. Plug it back in. Turn on my power switch. And uh, we'll see what it's going to do in a couple hours, right? Right. All right, I set my timer and I've got about a little over 30 minutes past. Let's try it out. Put it in there, hit my cold water dispenser. Try it. Oh yeah, definitely colder than it was before. And that's only 30 minutes. I'd probably say this tank is going to get nice and proper cold water soon enough. 
let's wait a few more minutes and uh, do it again, maybe another half hour. Ready, ready. I've got almost two hours because I got distracted. And I said cook dinner, so we'll try it out. Alright, here we go. Just a little bit cooler. Actually, now is not as cool as it was when I did it at the 30 minute mark, so my family has been drinking out of it. I don't know if it um, has a limit or if it didn't really help as much as I wanted, but it is definitely cooler than tap water, so it was an improvement. And um, I'm going to go with that. But more than anything else for this video, it shows you guys how to change those two parts. Whether or not it fixes the cooling issue is a whole other thing, potentially, because my unit being uh, more than 15 years old could just be low on Freon. But it definitely uh, has kicked it back in and given it a little bit more life changing those two uh, parts. I think they're relays or whatever they happen to be called. So, hope this has helped you out. And, uh, of course, if you like my videos, don't forget to share and subscribe.